So to get started on my Thai ginger jerk pork, I'm, I have like about a pound or so, probably like two pounds of pork meat. And as you can see, I have like two, well, two slices of lemon and I had it soaking in vinegar for about five minutes with the lemon. And that's just to really clean the pork and all that extra up off of it. I know a lot of people say they don't clean their meat. A lot of people ain't me. I clean my meat, okay? <laughs> I mean, you should clean your meat because when you see the things that come out of it, I mean, why would you not clean your meat, you know? So I'm just rinsing it off. And it smells nice and fresh. I'm also, the vinegar and the lime juice, the lemon juice, kind of like change the color of the pork of it. And that's really because it cleans the pork. So, and I have like big pieces. This is like just a pound. I paid like about six bucks or so at my local meat store. You could get it wherever you feel to get it from and that's fine so i'm gonna drain all of my water out my pork i'm gonna get as much liquid as possible and then i'll get some paper towel and i am going to clean it up i am going to be making some thai ginger jerk pork with some roasted potatoes it's gonna be delicious okay Okay, so as you can see, my pork is all clean and ready to go. And here in my bowl, I have some Thai ginger chili. And I got my Thai ginger chili from Trader Joe's. This one. And so that's what I am using. If you don't have access to a Trader Joe's, you could just use some sweet chili instead of the Thai ginger and probably just grate like some fresh ginger inside of it and I'm going to be adding to that just about two tablespoonful of Walker's Wood jerk seasoning I am using the hot and spicy if you don't like it hot and spicy I always say you know use mild and if you don't have access to like you know jerk seasoning a jerk seasoning a marinade is pretty simple it's just pimento pepper onion scallion you blend it all up with some garlic a little bit of soy sauce brown sugar and wine bam bam you pretty much got jerk seasoning okay so that's really what it is I'm gonna get me a gloves. <laughs> so I had to get me a gloves because I obviously forgot to grab my gloves. I don't usually use gloves because usually my hands are always clean. I wash my hands as I go along. But baby, with this, yeah, no. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. <laughs> so I'm gonna add to this one spoonful of green seasoning this is salt free home made green seasoning i'm gonna just do some extra and so that's that i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to just take my hand with my glove and i am going to massage Massage my seasoning very nicely into my pork and guys you could leave this overnight because it will give it like the best flavor if you're obviously pressed for time and you cannot wait I would say give it about 30 minutes but because of the flavors inside of the seasoning and the sauce, etc., 
you should be good to go. But for some amazing, you know, flavor, I suggest overnight or at least 30 minutes to one hour in the refrigerator. But look at that. Ooh. And I tend to really not use like a lot of um, salt in my when I'm doing like jerk meat because the season the the salt content in the jerk seasoning is usually very very high so I'm just gonna let this marinate for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to put it in my oven to bake okay so I have my hex clad pan here and this is like totally unconventional but kind of not really but yeah you get it i am just gonna put my pork in here and the reason why i'm going to use this pan it's because i'm gonna get a nicer cook overall on my pork on this pan so, I'm going to put it in the oven to bake. And this is oven proof, by the way. If you have an oven proof pan, feel free, go ahead and do that. I am putting my pork in this, like I said, because it's going to give it a nice, even cook across the board. And I'm also going to, I could put the cover on there, but... I don't think I want to really take that much of a risk with the cover but for sure I'm gonna put some foil over it and baby when this thing done it's gonna look so pretty and I have my oven I put my oven on roast and it's at 325 I'll let this cook for like about an hour at 325 and so when I put the foil on this it's gonna really steam the pork and then I'm gonna like uncover it and then let the let the oven do its thing and you know <laughs> this is a real little bit of pork you know but you could do as much pork as you like if you're cooking for like you know a bigger amount a large amount of people you could obviously you know upgrade double the recipe if need be but not too much of a doubling because again jerk seasoning with jerk seasoning a little bit goes a long way and you have to also remember there is seasoning in the there's salt in that Thai ginger so that's just a note too so I'm gonna just look at that Ooh, pretty man I'm just gonna cover this I'm gonna put it in my oven for about an hour I'm getting all that good juices out of here for about an hour and then after an hour we'll check on it so i took my pork out of the oven and i'm just gonna <laughs> pull my file off of it look at that nice and pretty oh baby so i'm just gonna get a knife and i'm just gonna poke it just to see like how tender the meat is. Obviously, it is not tender enough and that means it's not cooked fully the way I want it to with the steam. And you see, this is what I was talking about. It literally cooked in its own juice. Like, seriously, look at that. So I'm just gonna, that was like about 35 minutes or so since I had put it in. And I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna 
pour some of that nice sauce over it. And I'm gonna cover this back with foil and I am literally going to put it in the oven for about, let's say, hmm, 35 to 40 more minutes. And guys, if you're doing like a, a pan like this, please be careful you don't burn your thumb because I literally just did that. And so I'm gonna just pour some of this nice sauce over it. And I am going to cover it back. Right? And then I'm gonna let it cook for about 40 more minutes. And actually, I am going to turn my oven from 325 to about 375. Just so it could cook faster but i'm doing convection cook so if you're doing just have a traditional oven it may require a bit more time since i'm gonna turn it up more it probably be less because of the air circulation so keep that in mind also put it back in baby cover i'm gonna cover it okay after another hour so all together i did just about an hour and 45 minutes Ooh, look at that ah, it's nice juicy and tender i mean oh uh, my goodness looky here look at this so literally, I say about an hour, 45 minutes. I mean, holy macaroni. <laughs> it's so nice. I'm gonna add some barbecue sauce to this. Just a little bit, just to give it like a nice, you know, color. Well, I mean, the color is already amazing on this. I'm trying to debate whether I should add barbecue sauce or not. But honey, mm -mm -mm. look at this goodness. You know what? I'm going to make that decision and add the barbecue sauce just because. So I'm going to put... Just about that much spoonful. And then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna put this back in the oven. Uncovered, I mean, I really don't need to do much. I'm just gonna put it back uncovered. And before I do that, I have one orange here. I'm gonna cut it in half. And I'm just gonna squeeze the juice of that orange over, over it. Oh, this is gonna be so good. The citrus is gonna give it such a amazing taste. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna well I'm dream guys I'm gonna go ahead place this back in the oven and just let this brown a little bit give it that nice brownness and man I'm gonna go ahead and plate this with my roasted potatoes, baby. Ah, baby, it's gonna be so good. After about 10 minutes in my oven at 375 uncovered, baby, look at it. Pretty. It's not only pretty, but trust me, 
it tastes good and we don't got no water gravy this is nice thick goodness on a plate in a pot okay i'm gonna plate this with my potatoes so here i have in my bowl some baby dutch potatoes and i already like sliced some of them up and i left some just so that i could you know show how i dice my potatoes i pretty much slid it down the middle and do it in fours i mean you don't have to do it in fours if you don't want to if you just want to do it in half that's fine just like so but i just like to do it in fours so I'm just gonna put them together and just slit it down and bam, there you go. And I had them soaking in just water. I cleaned them off with, I did like a vegetable wash. I usually get my veggie wash from Trader Joe's. I mean, you could get veggie wash from wherever supermarket that carries veggie wash. Most times they're usually like in an organic store, like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, you know, Prelandria, those type of places. But if you have an organic supermarket next to you, you could do that. If you don't, you could just simply soak it in some vinegar and baking soda and it will clean off all that extra. Mm, okay, so I'm going to finish dice my potatoes up. And after I do that, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna season it up and I am gonna put them to roast. Okay. Okay, so I finished my potatoes and I'm going to add just about one, two, one tablespoon of Herbe de Provence. Just about a tablespoon, just so I could get it, you know, coat it all over my potatoes. I'm just doing two teaspoons of onion powder. And just about a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. One half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'm gonna also do a half a teaspoon of oregano. And I'm going to do about two teaspoons of dried parsley. You could use fresh parsley if you do have it on hand. However, I'm using what I have because I don't have that. And I'm going to do two teaspoons of paprika. The paprika is just really to give it some good color. And the thing about dry seasoning, it, you could put as much as you want and as little as you want just because it doesn't have any salt. So that's the benefit of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do about a half of a packet of Goyer seasoning. I am not gonna use the whole packet because it tends to be a little bit on the very salt side and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add some olive oil I'll say about three tablespoons of olive oil and just enough so it could coat the potatoes so that way it roasts properly and I'm gonna wash my hands here just so I can put my hand all up in this potato okay just so it can get nice and coated and seasoned with the seasoning Whoop, one fell out there we're gonna get that back and put it down and I'm gonna put this on a sheet pan to roast in my oven I'll probably roast it for about 45 minutes on my roast setting. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil. And 
then just a little bit more of my paprika. And then I'm gonna put it on my pan and I'm gonna come and put it to roast. Okay, so here I have my sheet pan and I'm going to spray some olive oil all over my pan to coat it just so that my potatoes don't burn and my potatoes already has extra olive oil on there so it should be really good to go and I am just gonna rinse my hand and I'm gonna pour my potatoes out on my sheet pan and I'm gonna get my I'm just gonna take all that excess oil and extra goodness that I have here and I'm just gonna spread it all out look at that ain't that pretty and it ain't even done I preheated my oven at 325 to roast and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in my oven my oven has a roast setting so I put it to, to the roast setting at 325 if your oven does not have a roast setting I would say you could do it at like 350 for about let's say 30 35 minutes and obviously you have to check it to see if you need to adjust the temperature if you need it to go lower or higher just to see how cooked your um, potatoes are or how roasted they are actually so I would say give and take I would do 35 to 40 minutes and then after that I'll you know I'll keep checking it at like the 30 minute mark to see if it's roasted the way I want it wanted it to and I'm just gonna go ahead just give this a little toss and I am gonna put it in my oven so after about 45 minutes baby the roast the potato uh look 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 at that mm, mm, mm. i mean seasoned crunchy goodness in every single bite if you want it to be a little extra brown you could put it back in so i'm just gonna flip these and just let like you know the top get some nice oh some crispy goodness oh gosh these are so pretty man look at that chicken why well, said chicken did i want roasted chicken i meant potato <laughs> look at these potatoes i mean perfection oh uh oh uh. <laughs> so i'm just gonna Flip these over just for a little bit. The ones that didn't get like nice crispy edges. See? Look. And I'm gonna put it back in for about five minutes. If you don't want that crispy edge, you could leave it like so. But I'm gonna put it back in just for five minutes maximum. And I'm gonna let it do its thing, but after that, we're good to go. You know what I say, the food here, it don't just look good, but it tastes amazing too. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that notification bell so you can get the recipe when it drops, okay? And you can follow me on Instagram at Spice Crave Cuisine and also on TikTok at Spice Crave Cuisine. Guys, couldn't even ask for a prettier plate even if I tried. I mean, look at that. Beautiful, simple, just amazing 
plate of food. A meal fit for a king or queen, or maybe, who knows, a good evening.